Longhorn Nation, you're going to love today's episode. First of all, I got one of the goats of Longhorn Twitter with me, and y'all may know him as the biggest Aggie hater or Aggie truther in the world. Yes, Kyle Umlane. He stops by the show, and we pick each game of the Texas Longhorn season one by one. So find out which games we think the Longhorns win and which games we think the Longhorns lose. And then at the end, you have to stay to find out, one, how Kyle Umlane became Mr. Data, two, how he ended up writing books about the Aggies, and three, some of the craziest Aggie facts that prove they are indeed little brother to the University of Texas. This is one of my favorite episodes, and I believe it'll be one of your favorite episodes, too. So excited for this Longhorn football team to get on the field on Saturday. Thank you for all the support and hook them. Hope you liked this episode as much as I did. Locked on Longhorns, the show, Jonathan Davis, your host. If you are a part of Texas Twitter, you might just know who I'm talking to, period. Kyle Umlang, uh, the minister of data, Mr. Data, uh, the Aggie destroyer. The person that keeps us grounded and reminds us how much of a poverty university Texas A&M is. Kyle, are you ready for the season to start? And are you ready to pick these games today? We're picking each game of the Longhorn season, seeing where we have them this year, stacking up in 2022. I am so ready. I'm beyond ready. I've been waiting for this. Uh, you you messaged me a while back and you're like, come on my podcast. I was like, yeah, I got to get on this thing. I've, I've listened to a couple episodes. You got a good thing going. I'm, I'm ready to I'm ready to add to this. Yeah, I appreciate it. He's not going to tell y'all I messaged him like back in June and he left me on red for like two months. But we're here. <laughs> we're here, man. We're ready to pick these games. Texas went five and seven last year. We're hoping they don't go five and seven this year. But the moment we've all been waiting for all offseason, you're going to see what I think this team is going to do in each game. You're going to see what Kyle Umlang uh, thinks this team is going to do in each game. And it starts this Saturday with Louisiana Monroe. So Louisiana Monroe is coming off of a four and eight season where the offense and the defense were among the statistical worst in college football. However, Matt Kubik, who led ULM to the 17th ranked offense in the country in 2019, returns this year as their offensive coordinator and their play caller. And Chandler Rogers, their quarterback out of Mansfield, Texas, provides some dual threat ability at the quarterback position. So I'm fairly certain we'll have the same prediction on this one, but do you think Texas beats ULM on Saturday? Safe bet? It is a very safe bet. They they have to beat them. That It's ULM. ULM has had one winning season in the past 26 seasons. There is there's no way. Sark is gone if we lose this. We are 35-point favorites. There's no way we're losing this. It might not be 35 points, but we're winning this for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 38 and a half. So do you think yeah. they cover? Uh, first game, I would it's not. Close. I would not bet on anything for covering. 38 yeah. is a lot to ask for. That is 39, you know, point, 39 points is a lie. I, also, you're right. If we lose to Louisiana Monroe, I love Sark. You know, he's my forever head coach. But if we if we lose to Louisiana Monroe, we might have to, uh, right. you know, um, reassess that. So you got uh, Texas winning on Saturday comfortably. Yes. I, I would assume Com against. It will, it, in a dream scenario, we will go up 20 something, 30 something points in the first half. All the great starters will rest second half uh, and prep for Bama. So if, if you don't see that, be worried. Okay. So yes. Texas starts off 1-0 against Louisiana Monroe. Yes. We can say that that is a lock. All right. In 2021, the Alabama Crimson Tide went 13-2, and ultimately losing to Georgia by 15 in the national championship game. And Nick Saban called that a rebuilding you. On September 10th, the Tide come to Austin, Texas, led by Bryce Young and Will Anderson. Kyle Umlang, are you drinking burnt orange Kool-Aid or not? Does Texas start off 2-0? and Does Quinn Ewers beat Bryce Young and Nick Saban in week two? I'm always drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid when we're losing six games in a row. But <laughs> it's Alabama. It's Nick Saban. I think he's lost 20-something games total at Alabama since 27, since 2007. It's, it doesn't look good. But, you know, if you look at Alabama's schedule – their favorite in all their games. Their hardest game on the schedule is September 10th. So I think we put up a good fight. I I want to say we keep it close because Texas plays good teams very close. Uh, if you watch the 2019 LSU game, we were there the entire time. I think we'll hang with them most of the time. I think it'll be one score game. It, it'll be entertaining, hopefully. So yeah. I think... I'm not going to say it's a definite win. I'll say I'll put that in the loss category. All right. But Kyle, but, but, we, but we will we will make a statement, though. 
Kyle coming with the heat stats already on, on ULM and Alabama. I have to agree. Uh, I can go ahead and, I guess, you know, <laughs> kill, the, kill the suspense, put the little ticker up at the bottom. I think it's a loss as well. I think Texas starts off one and one. Um, this is just the best team Texas has played in a while, and it's going to be the best team on Texas' schedule. This is an Alabama team that lost the national championship and got better, if you can believe that. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'd love to drink the Kool-Aid, but, yeah, I just think Alabama is going to be too much. Although – We'll be interesting to see how they deal with that heat, you know, and if they come out a little slow because I think it's like, right. what, 89, 90 in Alabama? It's like 130 <laughs> you know, yeah. in Austin or at least uh, that's what it feels like. All right, so yes. we're going to to game three. We both have Texas starting off one and one. So if you're watching or listening to this podcast, you are likely older than the UTSA football program. who <laughs> played their first game in 2011. Over the last two years, Jeff Trailer has built something special in San Antonio leading the Roadrunners to a 19-6 and record overall, and they went 12-2 and in 2021. Is this a trap game for the Longhorns, Kyle? I don't think so. I think UTSA is not will not be as good as they were last year. Last year they were phenomenal. They're a Cinderella team. Everyone was watching them. It, it, they're not going to do it two years in a row. I'm glad we didn't catch them last year. That would be a trap game. Who, who knows? We probably could have lost that last year. But this year, I say I think we got the win on this one. Okay. I agree. I'm going to be at that game. It's the day after my birthday. That's how I'm celebrating my birthday. So oh, they better yeah. win. September they better. Birthday. Yeah. Virgo season. Shout out. You know, you know how we do. So uh, they better win it. <laughs> so, but yeah, I agree. I think that they start off two and one. Uh, and so I'm on the same page with Kyle. Now we get into conference play. Quinn Ewers first road game. So Texas' most impressive win of the 2021 season undoubtedly came in week four when they beat the Texas Tech Red Raiders 70 to 35. But they open up conference play in Lubbock this year. Once again, Quinn Ewers' first road game. So it's going to be a hostile environment. You know, those uh, fans in Lubbock, uh, you know, have potty mouths, man. <laughs> they get real crazy. We saw they were doing Chris Beard back uh, during basketball season. Yeah, they, so, they, they, are, they are unhinged on Twitter. What is, what's, so I what's, can't imagine. What's, What's what's I'm, I'm gonna give you the, the floor to take a shot at the people in Lubbock. What's wrong with them, man? I think there's just nothing to do in Lubbock. You know, you get you get stir crazy. You know, they're they're known for throwing tortillas at at people. You know, I whatever. Everyone's got to have their thing. They can be the tortilla throwers for all I care. Their their thing is not winning championships. So I'm not okay. worried about tech. Um, you know, I love throwing stats out there. Uh, you know, Texas is they're they're in a bad period of football. They're, since 2010, you know it, they've been in a big slump. Texas Tech is so bad at football. Their record against Texas during their worst period of football, they're two and they're two and eight against uh no two and ten against uh Texas since wow. we started declining in 2010. That's, that's that's probably one of the worst records against Texas since we started our decline. Them and like no, Kansas has two wins against us. So yeah, it's it's them and them and Kansas have the worst records against us. Wow, who knew since that we, since we started being bad? Who so. knew that Texas Tech that was built on the backs of Graham Harrell and Michael Crabtree and then had Patrick Mahomes would be two and ten against the Longhorns in the last twelve years? Talk about poverty! Wow, yes. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this. Here Not my on, team. Yeah, on the bottom team. of this couldn't be my team, right? And that's why we both have. <laughs> Uh, the Longhorns beating Texas Tech. Yep. All right, man, you know, great minds think alike. You know, I don't have as many Twitter followers as Kyle. How many Twitter followers you got now? 37, 36,000? Something crazy. I, I don't know. I after, after you get the little K at the end of it, like it, it, you just yeah. you stop counting. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if I keep making all the same decisions and picks that uh, Kyle does, hopefully I can get to 36K Let's uh, do it. one day. All right. So we, we, we have – the Longhorns starting off three and one. Okay. Flashes bad, of last yeah. year. Flashes of last year. All right. Big if true. All right. So the last team to beat your Texas Longhorns on the football field were the West Virginia Mountaineers who traveled to Austin the week before the Red River showdown. And what could be a very high scoring game? We know Texas is going to put up points, but don't sleep on JT Daniels, a former five star quarterback, and Graham Harrell, who I just mentioned. Longhorn fans, y'all know who he is. He's calling the plays now <laughs> at West Virginia. So expect them to produce fireworks as well. Once again, this is the week before Oklahoma. Maybe Texas looks ahead. How do you see this game going in Austin against West Virginia? Um, you know, this one I think is a very losable game for Texas. 
I, I agree. I, I agree. worry that we'll be looking ahead at Oklahoma, you know, maybe celebrating a little too cockily after beating Tech. Uh, I think this could be a trap. It's one of my toss-ups for the year. Um, I do think we'll win, but I think it'll be by like a field goal, and we'll be lucky to get out of that game with that win. So I, I, st- I do think we'll win. But it'll be very, very close, and everyone will be aging rapidly during the game as they stress out. Yes, I definitely agree. As you can see, I just put on the bottom of the screen for my audio listeners. You can't see that. But, yes, I I agree with Kyle. I think that uh, Texas does ultimately beat West Virginia. But, man, talk about a trap game. I think this is going to be a very tough game for the Longhorns. Once again, they're probably going to be looking ahead to Oklahoma. Like he said, they'll have just beaten that poverty team in Lubbock. And, um, you know, (laughs) I think West Virginia gives them uh, a run for their money. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than Longhorn fans think. But ultimately, I think uh, they edge it out. All right. So that's West Virginia. So now we have them four and one, uh, which they were last year, looking pretty going into the Red River shootout. Hopefully it doesn't go the way it went last year because that was very embarrassing after Texas took what what was it? A 25 point lead uh, on Oklahoma. uh, I I know it was a record. Yeah, stat, was, guy, stat yeah. guy, give me some stats on the Oklahoma Texas game in, in, in 2021. Do you have anything for me? I just know that it was the biggest lead ever lost by Texas. I think, I think we were up wow. 20, 28 7. Yeah, you know, but that was the whole thing about our team last year. We could not finish. If, if we just have improved just a hair on defense, yeah. I think we'll win half of those games that we lost last year. But you know, th- this is a rivalry game. Everyone knows that it's it, they're usually high scoring. Usually both of us are ranked. Um, and for the last like eight times we've met in Dallas, it's been a one possession or no one score game. So it doesn't matter if we're ranked or unranked or Oklahoma is ranked or unranked. I think it's a one score game. But we've lost four in a row. This is ours this time. We're beating them and it will be by more than a score. Guaranteed. Lock it in. So we beat them by nine plus points. Yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, Kyle Kyle Umlang is saying we beat Lock it. We beat Oklahoma <laughs> by nine plus points. I have to ask you. I I know you probably don't know this off the top of your head, but I was thinking about this the other day. Is Sarkeesian and Venables like the longest last name matchup in Red River Showdown history? <laughs> it has to be right. <laughs> just because of Sarkeesian right there, probably. But I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll do some research. Okay. I'll let you know. Thank you, Kyle Umlang. We'll get back to y'all on that. If, if Sarkeesian and Venables is the longest last name matchup in Red River Showdown history, but it doesn't matter because Sarkeesian ends up with the win in my book as well. Uh, so we both have Texas starting off five and one. It gets interesting. We're going to talk about uh, the back half of the schedule next, starting with the Iowa State game. But first, a word from the sponsors that pay us. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all of the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week games. Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So I apologize, Longhorn Nation. I forgot to tell y'all why Texas will beat Oklahoma, but y'all seen the videos of Dylan Gabriel. Uh, I mean, standing about 5'10", 5'10 and a half, trying to throw that ball, you know, putting his all his might into throwing a, a 10-yard slant. He ain't got nothing on Queen Ewers. That's why we're going to win the game, man. Y'all already knew that. All right, let's get into this Iowa State matchup. So, stat guy, I got another stat for you. Sure. There was only one game. I guess I already kind of ruined it. But <laughs> there was only one game last year in which Texas failed to score a single point in the second half, and that came against Iowa State. But with the Cyclones losing Brock Purdy, Brees Hall, Charlie Collar, and I had to throw this in there, current Longhorn, Tariq Milton. We expect to see a lot of new faces in this year's matchup. So we both have Texas 5-1 and one at this point going into the back half of their schedule. What happens in the Iowa State game, Kyle? You know, they've, they've had our number last, like, three seasons. We got theirs this year. They, they're too fresh, too, too new. They can't hang with us. Um, we'll, we'll be, uh, in a pretty good groove after beating Oklahoma. Uh, this one, this one won't be close. It's a home game. We'll, we'll knock them out. I got Texas winning this one. Easy. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't see any way that Iowa state poses any type of threat. 
uh, to us. And at this point, we both have uh, Texas six and one. So yes, would you bowl say that eligible, folks? Bowl, bowl eligible, el eligible. Uh, for the first time in the Sarkeesian era. Bowl eligible. <laughs> Hey, hey, so at this point, six and one, Texas, the name brand, we have to be a top 10 team in the country. At this oh, yeah, point, huh? definitely top 10. Definitely top 10. Hanging with uh, uh, hanging with Bama, beating ranked Oklahoma. Yeah, we're, we're top yeah. 10. Okay. All right. So the next game, last year, Texas allowed Spencer Sanders and Oklahoma State to outscore them 16 to zero in the fourth quarter to steal a 32 to 24 win from the Longhorns in DKR last season. Now, Bijan and the Longhorns have to travel to a tough environment in Stillwater to face the Cowboys, who were a fourth down conversion away from winning the Big 12 championship. What happens in this game, Kyle? Man, Stillwater at night scares the bejesus out of me. I I hate playing in Stillwater um, almost as much as I hate playing in Manhattan, Kansas. Um I do not think Texas pulls this one off. I think they'll be, they'll be, um, you know, a little too cocky after beating Iowa State after being bowl eligible, six and one, top ten team. They're gonna, they're gonna lose this one uh, by at least at least a score, probably. Wow! So yeah. two Sorry years in a row, heartbreak to Oklahoma State. Yeah. So now let me let me get my pen out because we were on a roll and, and they were just winning a whole bunch of games. So this would make us. Six, so that's six and two at yep. this point for you. So Kyle has, after the Oklahoma State game, he has Texas six and two, still ranked, right? Of course. Oh, yeah, still ranked. Because Oklahoma State will probably be ranked, so it won't, yeah, be, they that, should, it won't be that they bad. It should still be ranked at that point. Yeah. They're going to win that game. Honestly, I and I just probably will never pick Texas to lose to Oklahoma or Oklahoma State on this podcast, so <laughs> get used to that. <laughs> hey. But... Hey, I, I just think that, honestly, like, I know it's a tough place to play, and they have a string of, of two really tough matchups going to Oklahoma State and Stillwater and then backdooring that and going to uh, Manhattan, which you just talked about, uh, to play Kansas State, who we'll talk about next. But I just really don't have much faith in Spencer Sanders. I thought they did a good job of making him throw the ball last year, and that's why they had a double-digit lead. And then when they were able to just run the ball <laughs> and take advantage of Texas' defense, that's how they came back. I think they put too many points on the board this time. They forced Spencer Sanders to throw the ball, and I don't think he can beat Texas having to throw the ball for four quarters. So that's why I have Oklahoma State losing to Texas. I have them 7-1 and one at this point. Kyle has them 6-2. and two. But Oklahoma State is nothing to sneeze at. Like I said, they were one play away from winning the Big 12 last year. So uh, a really good team. So, you know, I, I definitely don't fault you for saying they're going to lose to Oklahoma State, but I can't echo that. All right. Yeah. So the ninth game of the year, Texas stays on the road traveling to Manhattan, Kansas, where they face off with one of the darlings of college football this year in the Kansas State Wildcats. Everybody seems to think Kansas State has a chance to win the Big 12 this year. Led by Deuce Vaughn, who is one of the most explosive players in college football this season, a Darren Sproles clone, uh, no mistake, they went to the same school, and Adrian Martinez, who might be the only quarterback in college football who has more starts than Spencer Sanders. Well, for what it's worth, he has 39 games of playing experience at Nebraska and averages almost 600 rushing yards per season. So he's a dual threat quarterback. Does Texas survive one of their toughest tests of the season that week? I think they do. And I think it'll be a one score game, field goal game. Um, it'll be close, but Texas does pull this one out. Um, you know, Kansas State hasn't beat us since um, since Charlie Strong was coaching. So. I have oh, wow. I have all the faith in the world that we can beat them. Uh, for some reason, they have they have a hard time beating us as of late. So I think that we pull this one off, regardless of if they're ranked or how good they are, or that it's in Manhattan. I think uh, Texas has us in the W column for sure. So you have them now seven and two. Yep, and I have them now seven and two. Ah, I believe that they lose this them. game. I yeah. believe they lose this game to Kansas State. They have two – they're probably two toughest weeks of the schedule. You have to go to Stillwater, then you have to go yeah. to Manhattan. And I just think that to go 2-0 and in those games, I don't think Texas is ready for that. And I think they beat Oklahoma State. But I just look at it – I could see uh, a situation where Adrian Martinez goes for 200 yards from scrimmage, you know, passing and throwing. Deuce Vaughn goes for 200 yards from scrimmage himself. Um, and they have a good pass rush as well. And, and I think, uh, you know, they can run the ball, get to the passer, and it's just going to be a really tough environment. Um, and so I, 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 I guess I'm agreeing with the pundits, right? They're, they're all over Kansas State this year. 
I guess I'm all over Kansas State this year. I think Texas loses that game, and we both have them 7-2 and two going into the game with TCU. So B. John Musterson had 238 <laughs> yards of total offense last year in Fort Worth as the Longhorns won a close one against the TCU Horn Frogs. And Gary Patterson was so impressed with this performance, he decided to join the Longhorns coaching staff to spend as much time with Bijan as possible. So does Sark start off 2-0 and against TCU in his Texas tenure? Yes, he does. T- th- this is not the TCU uh, that we used to know. They they have no coach. They're, they're you know, it, it's, it's like Texas after losing Mac Brown. We were, we were lost for a while. They will be lost for a couple of years. They did as bad as we did last year, and we beat them. So, I, they're, no, definite win. Eight and two. Yeah. Yeah, Let's so, uh, yeah, eight and two. No disrespect to uh, Sonny Dykes. They do have a coach, you know. He did some good things at SMU, but they can't do enough to, to beat Texas. And and Gary Patterson was somewhat of like Texas's kryptonite, you know. Yes. We kind of went in there and, and took their best the best asset. Uh, and we tried to take O'Shawn Mathis as well, but after watching that Nebraska game, uh, <laughs> maybe we dodged <laughs> the bullet. So, uh, <laughs> no shade, right? Or shade. Yes. <laughs> However you want to look at it. So, uh, we both have Texas uh, eight and two, right? Going into what many non-Longhorn fans think might be the most important game on their schedule, it's Kansas. And if there's two things that Texas has heard all off season, it's your team went five and seven, and they lost to Kansas. And now we have to go on the road. So I don't know if it's a tough environment or not, you know, to Lawrence, Kansas, and face the Jayhawks. Like they, you know, yeah. they might be, you know, they're gonna have some momentum, right? They're gonna, they're gonna be up for that game. So. With all that being said, how 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 bad do the Longhorns beat Kansas this year, Kyle? This, this, as sad as it is to say this, this is like this is a personal game. Every Longhorn needs this win badly. Our team will not be laughed at again for this. They can be laughed at for something else. It will not be Kansas. We are not losing Kansas. If we lose to Kansas, I'm I'm out of here. You won't see me for a while. Ain't gonna happen. No way. Texas by three scores. That's, yes. that's Texas by three scores. They got us last year. Get your jokes off. They, at week 11 or week 12, whatever it is, Texas by three scores, like I said. And yeah, and it, I honestly, and I hope Sark puts it on them. Like, I like right. I don't even don't even treat it like Louisiana Monroe. I don't want to see Hudson Card. I don't want to see Malik Murphy. No disrespect. <laughs> you want to see like, B-Shop 100 <laughs> plus yards still running in the fourth yeah, quarter? Yeah, I need I need I need <laughs> 70 plus points and, and 550 plus yards of offense, Sark. The, yeah, all gas, fine. no breaks. Like, if that, if that ever was a thing, if all gas, no breaks was ever a thing, it needs to be that week against Kansas. Yeah, I'm salty about last year, and yeah, I won't be salty after this year. Hook them. Yeah. All right. Last yeah. game of the regular season. So, well, we both got them 9-2. and two. Okay. We we must think the Longhorns are, are going to turn something around this year. All right. It's, it's that Kool-Aid. You better watch yeah, it's it. That, it's that Kool-Aid. All right. So, Texas you got, you got to regular. sip it slowly. got to sip it slowly. <laughs> Sip it slowly, man. I, yeah. I I chug it, man. I've been chugging it for seven months. So Texas ends their regular season at home against the reigning Big 12 champion Baylor Bears, right? If you're if you're in the woods and, and you're fighting a bear, help the bear. So who boasts <laughs> strong offensive and defensive lines, top 10 in the country, uh, most experts would say. Baylor is also starting a new quarterback in Blake Shapin. Sorry to Gary Bohannon, who had to go to South Florida to get a starting quarterback job. But they lost a ton of offensive production and key defensive players to the NFL draft. Does Sark get the best of the new superstar coach in the Big 12, Dave Aranda? And really quick, I just want to say, I need, you may be able to verify this for me. I was trying to look this up. Somebody, you know, may tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like I heard this somewhere, but there's never been a bald head coach to win a national championship in college football. Damn, now I got to look look that up too. So Dave Aranda Aranda might be working from a deficit, you know what I mean? But he can win the Big 12, but he can't win the national championship because bald coaches don't do it. In college football, but last game of the regular season, they're going to be Man. nine and two heading into this this game against the reigning Big Twelve champions in the Baylor Bears. Who wins the game, Kyle? You know, if it's going as we say it's going, it doesn't really matter because win or lose, I think we're still in the championship game. I agree. You know, this will be only our second loss. Um, there's no way Baylor's going to have, or Oklahoma State will only have one or two. So. I think we're in regardless. So I don't I think knowing that, I think that makes this game losable. I don't want to lose, but they were really good last year. And I this is one of my toss-up games. I'm gonna say put in the L column. 
Great minds nine, think alike. Nine and three is not bad. I have I've I've had him at nine and three, so I had to pick three losses, and 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 Baylor was the one. Like I think it just comes down to we talk about how important the trenches are, right? We've been bragging about oh we've never had recruited classes like this. We invested in the trenches. Look how big Kelvin Banks is. Cam Williams is four hundred pounds. But look, Baylor still has the best offensive and defensive line in the Big Twelve. They have a defensive mastermind in David Randa, and they have a quarterback in Blake Shapin, who by that time will be developed and can throw right. the ball. So. Uh, I think Texas loses that game and they end up nine and three. So we both have the moment y'all been waiting for for seven months. Jonathan Davis and Kyle Umlang have your Texas Longhorns going nine and three during the regular season and ending up in the Big 12 championship game. We both say, do you have anything to say about the schedule or our predictions at this point, Kyle? No, I think I think we're right on the money. You, you think we're going to – well, one of us has to be wrong because you have them – Losing to Oklahoma State, I have them losing to Kansas State. So one of us has to kind of be wrong. Hey, like, do we do we want to put a bottle of Bijan Mustardson on this, or what, what do we want to? Yeah, do? sure. I'll, 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 I'll bet you a bottle of Bijan. And the only difference we have <laughs> is the Oklahoma State and Kansas State. So how about this? If if Texas beats Kansas State, you owe me the mustard. If if um, if Texas, Texas beats Oklahoma Oak State, yeah, yeah, or no, wait, what you know, whatever. The, yeah, we whatever, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. remember what you picked, but. Whatever the opposite, you know, whatever yeah, happens, if, that'll if Texas, be the decider. If Texas beats Kansas State, I owe you a bottle of Bijan sure. mustard. Sin. And if Texas beats Oklahoma State, no, no, damn, I think I said it wrong again. Yeah, see, it's hard. Oh my god! All right, all right. Let me just let me just stop talking. Look, look. <laughs> We're gonna Texas go to show break while yeah. he while he calculates his numbers. All right, Texas is going nine and three this year. You heard it from two Longhorn experts, I guess. So. Most of y'all know Kyle Umlang uh, from Twitter, and he provides Aggie facts, so much so that he wrote a book on the Aggies, right? And and he constantly reminds us, like I said earlier, how trash just Texas A&M is as a university. I mean, they haven't won a national championship in football since, what is it, fill in the blank for us? <laughs> Their last national championship is closer to the Emancipation Proclamation than it is to this upcoming season. Wow. Look, 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 stay tuned after this word from our sponsors to hear more Aggie and Longhorn facts such as the one you just heard. Dwell in Austin and Hill Country mortgages have combined to make your Longhorn real estate team in a changing, more complex market. You need to work with the top professionals in Austin. Our data and information driven approach gives our clients a significant advantage. Decades of experience in all market conditions makes us able to achieve the best results for our clients. And our clients for years have outperformed the market, leveraging our proprietary research, information, and expertise, which is now more important than ever. Once again, Dwell in Austin and Hill Country Mortgages have combined to make your Longhorn Real Estate team. Check it out at www.longhornrealestateteam.com for all your real estate needs in the Austin area. Hill Country Mortgages, LLC, NMLS 232-4262, Jonathan Sarver, NMLS 993-872, equal housing opportunity. All right, Kyle. So I have to ask you, like, you're Mr. Data, right? The, what, yep. what, what did you say? The, the, the minister of data? You know, all of the that. Min the minister of facts, the Aggie slayer. I've heard them all. All right. All right. So what – and you have your own podcast. What, what's it called? Statistically Speaking, the Statistically yes. Speaking podcast. Like, what – drove your interest what made you so interested in data and the numbers and basically reporting them to the larger fan base on twitter yeah so so it started with you know me and my brother who also went to texas me and him and one of our other friends uh mutual friends through high school who also went to texas we had like this group chat and we would always chat like each other during each game and stuff um and it just i would just find random stats and stuff and i would send it to them and you know, they would give it like a thumbs up or say LOL or something. And I was like, man, I, I got to post these somewhere else where other people can see them because some of them are pretty good. So I was like, OK, I'll I'll um, I'll find some avenue for that later. And then for grad school, I was in this information visualization class where we had to work with like Tableau and all this other stuff. And they said you should get on Twitter and post it because there's a community out there that will help like help improve your stuff and just give you pointers and stuff. So I started posting stuff on Twitter and then I posted this one graphic with Texas and AM because I like that stuff. Anyway, it got a bunch of uh, likes and Sam Ellinger retweeted it. And I got like a thousand followers overnight. And I was like, Whoa, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to post nothing but college football stuff because that's what people like. 
I was like, so I was just doing straight Texas stats. Just this is Texas. Um, uh, Texas is good at this, whatever. And then I was introduced to Twitter trolls, which, as you know, are people that just attack everything you say. So I, I, I was never really on Twitter. You know, I had a Twitter since 2011, but I posted like five tweets from then until like 2019. So what didn't really count. But um, once I, I got introduced to Twitter trolls, like just Aggies mostly uh, responded to everything I said with just nonsense or illogical thinking or just non-factual stuff. You know, they, they have this big head from joining the SEC. They forget everything that happened before that. So I, I started responding to them. It turned into like people called them like Kyle bombs or whatever. Uh, I started doing them strictly on Thursday, started a hashtag movement called Aggie Fact Thursday. And then the book stemmed from that. Uh, it's just a it's just a book of like my favorite Aggie facts that I post on Twitter. Um, stuff like, you know, Texas A&M has 37 wins against the Longhorns. But Texas got their 37th win against the Aggies back in 1950. A oh, lot of people <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't think about that. It's we own them in everything. So um, hold on, hold on. So this yeah. is in football. Texas A&M has 37 wins against Texas total. Total. But Texas got their 37th win against Texas A&M in 1950. Yes. Oh, my Lord. And what you're telling me is that these Aggie fans did it to themselves because you started off only right. posting Texas facts. They they invented me. They built me into this <laughs> thing that attacks them. I, I, I would just – I would post stuff like – Texas ranks sixth in if if they were a country they would rank sixth uh, in like gold medals from the whatever Olympics. I would post just random stuff that was just strictly pro Texas. Then it turned into, well, I also got to make a dig at the Aggies now since that's what I'm. I'm I was, it was like preemptive striking uh, to combat the trolls. So yeah, it's turned me into this this monster. <laughs> this Aggie yeah, monster. Yeah, yeah. Let, let that be a lesson, right? Like, you know, don't poke the bear, right? They could have just <laughs> left him alone. Right. You could have an account just posting the best Texas stats, but now Kyle has turned into the number one Aggie hater, but the number yes. one Aggie truther, right? You know, yes. every Thursday you can find, uh, well, really every, seven days a week because, you know, they're mad at everything, but especially on Thursdays, you can find uh, Kyle Umlang on Twitter uh, pissing off Aggie faithful. So, all right, the, the moment I've been waiting for, definitely, hopefully the, the moment y'all been waiting for, give us your best and, and craziest Longhorn or Aggie stats, man. R rattle them off to me, man. Sure, let's go. Um, Texas A&M hasn't beaten a true ranked opponent since 2014. What is that, a true ranked opponent? What do you mean by that? Um, oh, a true away ranked opponent they have okay. beaten they've beaten ranked opponents at home but they have not beaten one away since 2014 okay. a, lot of people, a lot of people don't know that one the last uh -huh. time that a&m had back-to-back -back seasons with the winning record in conference play was 1999 and 2000 they the went last time they had a winning Texas conference a record had a winning conference record two years in a row was 1999 and 2000 yep Oh my! Why do they talk to us at all? I, that's why I'm here. To, <laughs> they 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 just forget everything. Okay, Louisiana Lafayette has only beaten four Power Five teams ever in school history. Arkansas State has only beaten three Power Five teams ever in school history. They have both beaten Texas A&M. Arkansas State and Louisiana Lafayette. Yes. All right, no. let's, we, we, let's just, I, I'm having too much fun with this. Yeah, we got, let's keep the party going, man. Let's keep the party going. In the last 25 years, Troy has beaten LSU in Death Valley more times than Texas A&M has. Troy. In the last 25 years, Troy has more wins at LSU than Texas A&M. Yes. Who is in the SEC with LSU. And plays them every year. Um, <laughs> since 2014, A&M has a winning record over the following SEC West opponents. Arkansas. Bro, say that one more time. <laughs> I said since 2014, Texas A&M has had a winning record over the following SEC West opponents. Arkansas. End of okay. list. Next one. <laughs> oh, my God. 
2020 is Jimbo Fisher's first and only time as Texas A&M head coach to finish a season ranked higher than the Longhorns. Just one time. It was COVID season. That's the only time he's ever finished a season ranked higher than us. But you, but they don't talk about that. Uh, no Texas A&M head coach has won as many bowl games in their careers with the Aggies as Tom Herman won with the with the Longhorns, and he was fired for underperforming. No Aggie head coach has ever won more bowl games in their career. No, as many as Tom Herman, not more, just as many. Than Tom Herman, who spent four years at the University of Texas. Right. Oh, my God. Bro, this is like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put the link to the book in there for y'all. Because if, if these <laughs> if these six, seven stats are any indication of what's in the book, this is, it's, this yes. is insane. And All right, let, let, I, I have two volumes, too. There's, there's 202 facts out there. I have two volumes. Volume one and two. Okay, let's give us a, give us a couple more before we get out of here, Kyle. I'm having too much fun with this, man. That, that, this is <laughs> okay. Like I, I feel like you can't even say half this stuff about like Vanderbilt and Kentucky. Like this is crazy. Like this is insane. Like okay, go ahead. Texas A&M is the only former Big Twelve team to not win a football division title or make its conference title game yet. Colorado did it in 2016. Nebraska did it in 2012, and Missouri did it in 2013 and 14. They're the only ones. And their last conference title was like 2010, right? Uh, like no, that. 1998. Nin oh, wow. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. Maybe that was a division title. 1998? Yes. Okay. Texas A&M has more yell leaders than they have national championships, Big 12 championships, and SEC championships combined. They have five yell leaders. <laughs> That that's a good one. Oh, let's end on that one. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll end on that one. I Texas A and M end on the squeal. That yeah, it's Te not going to top that. Yeah, Texas A and M has more Yale leaders than national championships, Big Twelve, Big 12 championships, championships, and SEC championships combined. Yes. Man. Aggie fan, what are y'all doing, man? Like, what? Why are y'all even talking to the goat? Why y'all tweeting at the goat? Why y'all messing with Kyle Umlane? When he just ethered y'all on Locked All Longhorns, he'll keep ethering <laughs> y'all on Twitter for the rest hey, of time. Hey, man. tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. Stop in, stop <laughs> by, say hi. All right, hey, hey, hey. This is look. This is gonna drop on, on Thursday. So when you hear this, the first thing you need to do is, is go to Kyle Umlane's Twitter. And see how mad Aggie fans are getting at the truth. He doesn't post opinion. Yeah. This is all everything he just said is truth. I out fill in the opinion. They're trash, but everything he said <laughs> is, is, is truth. Kyle, I really appreciate you coming on the Locked On Longhorns. I need you to tell them where they can find your book, where they can find your podcast, where they can find anything that you put out into this. Sure. Book. Uh, I have two podcasts. One is statistically speaking, we bring on people that talk about like statistics and data. And it's a, it's a great little show. Uh, we also make some some picks, straight up picks uh, on the week. I also have another one. It's called the Lone Star Showdown, and it's actually with an Aggie co-host. And we go back and forth and stuff on it. Uh, talk trash. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, and then my book is on Amazon. Or if you're in Austin and want to get your hands on it right then and there, it's at the Co-op. And at Sue Patrick, which are two of the best stores in Austin to get your Longhorn gear. Um, yeah, and like I said, come find me on Twitter. Kyle Umlane, the GOAT of Longhorn Twitter. We both believe that the Longhorns will go 9-3 and three this year and end up in the Big 12 championship game. But we got to purify the air. We got to, you know, you know, get some, some fresh air in here. So I need you to end on, on a Longhorn stat. You know, I need you to end us with some Longhorn data because we didn't uh, – that talked about the Aggies or, or lack thereof for the last 10 minutes. So end us on the, on the Longhorn stat, man. Give us something positive before we get out of here. Sure. Alabama has a losing record to only two SEC schools, Oklahoma and Texas. Woo! Hook them. Hook them. Peace.